We've had a chance to take a look at Volkswagen Jetta in SEL with the two and a half liter five cylinder. We've also looked at the TDI version. Well, today here on rumblestrip.net and 10 minute test drive, we're gonna take a look at the sporty version of the Jetta. This is the GLI. So from an enthusiast standpoint, the GLI is really what the Jetta should have been from the beginning. It has a fully independent rear suspension, the two liter turbo motor, and your choice of manual or DSG gearbox. Our uh, G GLI unit here came with the, uh, the DSG and it's our first opportunity to use it in, uh, in Volkswagen with Volkswagen. And I'm gonna say, it's pretty favorable. There are a few tweaks here also to the GLI that we want to take a just a quick peek at. Uh, one you'll see from the uh, sportier trim and uh, it comes with a little bit of a front splitter here, that little extra lip. More aggressive brakes, better tire, better Dunlop tires. And if we circle around into the back here, little bit extra from a diffuser standpoint. Other than that, it looks pretty much like the standard Jetta, which isn't a bad thing. It's not a ugly car. Maybe not the most attractive one out there, but it's conservatively styled and hey, Volkswagen is selling every one of these things they can make, so hard to argue with success. But the real point uh, that we wanted to discuss with the with the GLI version is actually two points. One, the interior, and two, really what everyone cares about, how does the thing drive? Let's dive inside and take a look. One of the issues that's been talked about over and over and beating you know horses to, to death 19 times over again is the quality of the interior with the new Jetta. And in the SEL version that we tested, didn't really have too many complaints about it. In the TDI version, we did notice a couple places where it looks like it had been cheapened out a little bit. Here in the GLI version, this is actually a pretty solid interior. If we want to take a look at all the soft touch material in here, especially on the dash, on the sides, the uh, quality of the materials here, um, and if we can take a quick peek here, um, you see with the, move the bag here, uh, with the stitching on the seats uh, and the actual seats themselves, it's actually pretty fair it's good same uh, same goes as you look into the back seat as well Let's see if we can turn that for you our one-man production team here um, also the steering wheel here a bit more aggressive with the we'll see this here the oops the other way flat bottom on the steering wheel here give you a little more aggressive you definitely give you a a better grip. Now this does have electric steering in it and road feel is okay. It's, you know, it's not the best, but it's not horrible either. Uh, very light at parking lot speeds and, and then obviously picks up a little bit uh, as you drive. The uh, audio system here that is, it's just not our favorite. We've, we've found um, we, you can get to it after a while and figure everything out. The sound itself is actually pretty good. This does have uh, elements of the Fender system in it. Um, it's just the, the interface, the UI, uh, is not our favorite. And that's, you know, it's all subjective at that point. Um, we've, there's parts of what we like, but just trying to find the sub menus really is, is our main issue with it. It's just, it's not very intuitive. So let's uh, take this thing for a bit of a drive here and Kind of get our thoughts on one of the things we really want to kind of illustrate here is that the turbo four in here actually makes a, an interesting noise it, it actually sounds a lot like uh like a subaru flat four cylinder here and uh, we'll just jump on this thing and see if you can hear it so not a 
bad noise. Um, takes a little getting used to, but I you don't know, kind of dig it. Oops, there's the, uh, fix the camera there a little bit. The one thing that uh, you can hear though is, or maybe you can't hear, is the actual noise while you're driving here. And we have a, I'm gonna pull up our handy little uh, meter here, to our sound meeting, our decibel meter here, built into the phone here. And we'll reset it here. Let's see if you can get a pic picture of that, but about 73 decibels just driving around, so pretty fair. That's uh, that's not too bad. Um, obviously, quieter cars and stuff, but for for what this is, it's you know, it's quite good. Uh, the seats in this thing are really nice, very comfortable. Uh, manual adjustments all around, which is fine. Um, you know, some people will want electric seating, electric uh, adjustment. In an era where everything gets so heavy, you under you begin to understand the weight savings you can get in the little things. And believe it or not electric seats can be very very heavy so the fact that these are manual adjustments um, it's not it's not a problem and it saves a little weight that's always to me a good thing just becoming more and more conscious of of weight in cars these days um, we've changed road services and not sure if you can hear uh, hear the difference uh, or if there's a little extra jitter in the camera here that you can see but uh, again the uh, fully independent rear suspension in this thing and just a, a little bit firmer tuning up front with the suspension um, No real degradation in ride uh, Most of the time it actually is is the same or better uh, Especially when you get on the rougher pavement. You definitely do notice a difference in uh, in the quality of the ride and um, We uh, we actually like that and can, most of the time you can't tell the difference uh, between uh, a twist beam or a torsion beam rear suspension and independent uh, just driving around but here in southeast Michigan with our lovely roads you definitely notice it in this the the, the tune the, the tuning of the rear suspension in this car is much much better um, you know the the GLI is all about is, is the driver's car here and you can definitely feel that care was taken in a lot of the, the, the suspension design and the driving dynamics you get in it and you, you get on some back roads. We're on a two lane road, mostly straight here at this point, but uh, we, there are a few twisty roads we've been able to drive it on and the car has a nice flow to it. Um, you know, it's, it's good, it's fun, it's enjoyable to drive. We've piled up about uh, not quite 300 miles on it and uh, we definitely wouldn't mind keeping it a little bit longer, but unfortunately it has to go back tomorrow. Uh, is it one of our favorite cars that we've had? I don't, can't say it's one of our favorite, but it's certainly a car that we've enjoyed having, definitely. Um, okay, so the other thing we have to talk about is uh, the price tag on it. Uh, this car, as it sits right now, essentially fully loaded, is going to sticker at about $28,000. Now, when we get to $28,000, that's starting to be a good chunk of money. And is it worth 28 grand? Well, you know, value is in the eye of the beholder, I guess, is, is what you can say. But it, let's just say that it's pushing the envelope for us. The upgraded materials, definitely we like, and we definitely appreciate it. And the one reason that Volkswagen has been able to sell so many more Jettas than they had in the past was because they took, you know, the, I hate to say the quality of the materials, but essentially the level of materials uh, down a notch and were able to pass that along in cost. And that's why these things started, you know, $18,000. When you bring all of that equipment back in, you understand why the, the Jetta was typically the highest priced car in its segment. And you see that here, the, the well, like, I, like we said, the quality of the materials is much better. You know, the, rear, the, the better rear suspension, but again, you're talking $28,000 at this point. So, you know, you got to, you get a lot of give and take in it. What do you want? Um, for those of those who are looking for a nice four door sedan, you know, what most people would call mid size in this day and age, in GLI trim, if you want something sporty, it's not bad, not bad at all. 
like we said, we've liked the car, we've enjoyed our time with it. Um, you know, we've we've tried all three, three uh, well not all three, but we've tried three trim levels now, and don't every, as much as everyone bags on the GLI, and we don't want to be apologists or not saying that you know VW is kicking us some cash to say nice things about it because they're not at all. Um, this is just what we think. The difference in cars is so small today at, at certain levels uh, that you, that you have to kind of nitpick everything and. Have people gone overboard on the Jetta? Maybe, but considering where it was and what it became, it's understandable. If you take this car on its own, it's a whole different conversation. So, is the GLI what the Jetta should have been from the start? Probably, at least from an enthusiast standpoint. From a Volkswagen corporate standpoint, it makes sense. You, you sell as many cars as you can, and then you give enthusiasts or whatever niche group you're trying to target or appease what they want. And at the end of the day, that's what the GLI ends up being. It's Volkswagen's attempt to appeal to that niche market that wants something like a GTI, but they need the trunk or something maybe a little bit bigger now that it's a slightly different platform. So overall, GLI, it's good. It's it's not bad. Is it twenty eight thousand dollars good? That's a little bit harder to to decide, and I'm not sure that we've made a decision. We like it, enjoyed driving it, had fun with it. Don't necessarily want to give it back, but hey, go drive it for yourself. Oh, well, you're the person who makes the side. You come here for ideas and opinions, I'm here to give you the information. But at the end of the day, you have to get behind the wheel and decide for yourself. Are you gonna like it? I think so. Is it worth the money? I don't know, I really don't. And I think that's where we should leave it.